hello my friends janet janet here live video thank you so much for coming in today as you can see i'm going to speak about a very sensitive top well not sensitive but i'm going to speak about a very very important topic and this is best from what i've been hearing from you from the comments and i think this is a very 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 good topic for all of you so thank you so much for coming uh it's been a while since i showed up but i'm happy to be here you can tell from the title today how to increase your chances of getting a visa at the american embassy my friends this is one of the most important topics as you come in i thank you so much for showing up this is gonna be a live video share with your friends because i've always said at the end of the day at the end of the day all of you i see you at the end of the day, we can do everything. We can apply for schools. We can apply for F1. We can apply for F2. Visiting conferences and everything. If we cannot deal with this big elephant in the room called the embassy, this is not going to happen. Okay? Some of you, your friend requested me. I'm coming and I'll add you on the list. It's just that now I'm dealing with the ones that came in already. Everyone that comes to my page, they come with a full list of questions. You should see some of them writing to me a full page. And you know what? That's why I exist. That's why you are my friends. It's for me to help you navigate these issues, okay? And I see you all over the world. You're coming in today. All of us here have had people from Cameroon. The other day, I met someone from Togo. Welcome, you know? Someone from Cameroon and I think Nigeria. I think Cameroon. They said, Janet, we'd never get these visas. The minds now, everyone believes we will not even get the visas. It's very difficult to get these visas. The other day, even in Dubai, people tell me the same thing. The other day, someone told me, Janet, we were a group of 100 people who were coming for a conference or a business conference and only two people got a visa. And then I went through my inbox and then I got another comment from my mother. She's like, okay, my daughter was coming for a conference, a hundred people, and only two are denied. Do you know about this? I don't want to mention the name of the group, but they say there was a group that was inviting them, and they didn't get these visas. So I understand, my friends, okay? Why am I here to talk about this topic? If I don't mention your name, I love you so much. I know Facebook, we have to be interactive, my friends, okay? All right. After watching several interviews, when I come here with this topic, of course, I tell you, my friends, I don't work at the embassy. What I'm offering you is life experience with the American citizens. I've lived with them. I've worked with them. And if I can help you understand how they think and what they're expecting from you, maybe we can improve your chances. Okay, so that's point number one. That's why I'm doing this presentation today. Okay, after listening to your comments and you're telling me these things, a common theme is emerging. Okay, maybe the embassy is denying at higher rates. Or maybe it's just in our mind. Me, I don't know. Okay, I also went through the State Department to see what they say about these visas. Mostly they just give you information on how to apply for a visa, but they are not telling you exactly how. You know what I mean? They are not telling you exactly how. And that's when we come in. People like us who love research, people like us who are bloggers, okay? All of you, thank you so much for coming. Also, going to the embassy, money invo is involved. This is a risk. People are working so hard to raise this money to go to the embassy. So we need to be prepared so we have our best, the, the best chance possible, okay? Now, this is an area that has very high emotions, especially if people are denied these visas. Okay, so this, that's why I'm doing this video, uh, this video today. This is a risk, okay? No one can promise you a visa. No one can promise you a visa. Even the embassy officials. And by the way, I take time. I took time. I've listened to these people. I listened to them talking in the Philippines. Directly, the embassy officials. I've listened to them. Some of them were in Nigeria giving an interview. So this is coming from their mouth. Okay, some of the information I'm giving you today, I've listened to them because there's no other way we can know. For me, because I do my research, I go and find these uh, clips where they've talked about interviews and the embassies and all that, and I come and present to you, okay? So that's where my information is coming from. It's coming from me listening directly from the embassy officials and what they think and what they say and what they expect. Secondly, I go to the websites, American websites, immigration website, the State Department website, and I read again, okay? And then I use my personal experience, having lived and worked here, to help us, to help us, to improve our chances, you know? 
We don't want to go to the embassy every time and just spend money. And no one is explaining to us how we are supposed to behave or what to expect, you know, when we go to the embassy. Honestly, honestly, someone has to step up, you know. So I'm here hopefully to increase your chances next time you go to the embassy. And I know some people have been denied the first time and they are just down and they are saying, oh my goodness, what can I do? Some of them twice. Now, I've seen, honestly, I've had... I've had someone has told me they've gone to the embassy 10 times. I'm not lying to you. But eventually, they came. They came here eventually. At some point, even that person will be like, huh, honestly, this person wants to make her dreams or his dreams come true. You know, they are human also. Okay? So that's what we are covering today. Next time you go to the embassy, be prepared. Don't just show up. Don't just show up. Be prepared. Be prepared, my friends. Okay? All right. So, let me say point number one. Point number one. Point number one from what I've heard. Okay? Let me explain first of all the different kinds of visas. In general, in general, there's immigrant visa. Immigrant visa is a permanent visa. The other name is green card. When you say all those things, they mean the same thing. Okay? Permanent resident. Green card. Immigrant visa. That is permanent. So you are going to the embassy, you've already been granted a green card, it has come through the National Visa Center, it has been sent to the embassy back home. They are just going to process to make sure your medical is good, you are the right person, you are the right family, you're coming. Okay? The chances of being denied that one are very low because they already know your intention. Your intention is to come and stay in America permanently. Are we on the same point? Let's differentiate these two visas because I've seen people asking me, how about green card? Let's understand what a green card means. A green card means basically that America has allowed to come, has allowed you to come here and live permanently. So when you are going to the embassy, your situation is different. They will require a lot of documentation, your education, your birth certificates, you know, all those things to prove that you are actually the right person. You don't have any criminal history. You don't have TB. You know, all those medical things they are looking for. So that is a comprehensive interview. But the chances of being denied are very low. You must, maybe they find you are criminal. You use drugs. If you are using drugs, make sure you don't. Because they will check you for that. I know someone that missed a green card just because they found drugs in their system. You understand, my friends? So, I've told you that is the permanent side. Let's go to the temporal side, okay? That is the non-immigrant visa, also known as uh, temporary visas. These are things like visiting, students, J1, au pair, you know, conferences. You're coming for a wedding. You're coming for medical treatment, okay? Those are temporary visas. My friends, the assumption, number one, the law assumes, the way they are trained, it's not me saying this. The law is actually there in the books. And I've heard them say and talk in the videos. The assumption is anyone asking for a temporary visa to enter the United States, the assumption is you want to come here and not return home, period. So let's just put that on the table. That is the first thing they are looking at. They are assuming. They are not claiming that that's what you want. But the law tells them to assume that anyone asking for a temporary visa, their intention is to come to the United States and live and stay permanently and not go back home. Are we clear? All right. Now, they went ahead and said some people think the more documents they present, the better their chances. They said that is not really the case. They, they think they are looking at, at that point because they are assuming your intention is to come and stay. It's for you to demonstrate that you have compelling ties that will make you return back home when you finish school, when you finish your wedding, when you finish your conference. Okay? That is the assumption. It's in the books. It's the law. That is the only thing they look at. If I was to stop this video today, from my research, if I was to stop this video today, okay, that is all, that's why you are going to that interview for a temporary visa. They are there to screen people who are coming here for serious business and go back home, okay? All right, now having said that, they say some people think the more documents you carry, the better. Well, bank statements are necessary, of course. You want to go prepared with everything, but they say that's not even, sometimes they don't even look at the documents. Can you believe that? 
I heard them say, they say, and some of you can confess and say, I went to the embassy. They didn't even ask me anything. They didn't even ask questions. They just denied me. Well, I went to the embassy and they just gave me a visa. Do you understand? Now, some of you, let me encourage you or maybe discourage you. I don't know what I'm saying here, but let me tell you one thing. Number two, before you show up in the embassy, before you show up, that application form, when you are filling in a form and making a payment, that is the form they are going to look at. It's like you are applying for a job. Like if you apply for a job to human resource, they're going to ask you, who was your former employer? Why did you quit that job? Where are you working now? How many children do you have? Which school did you go to? By the time you come to the window of that desk, my friend, that person knows you already. That person knows you already. Okay? They're going to go by what you wrote. I don't know if you guys type or you write down. I will advise you to avoid spelling errors, grammar errors. Be clear. When you're filling in, don't leave blanks. If there is nothing you, for you to say, you say nil or not applicable. Make sure the form is complete. Okay? Make sure you fill in the blanks. If you graduated in 2013 and then you went back to school in 2016, you want to explain what happened between these two years. Did you have children? They want people that are actively working or actively going to school. Otherwise, they assume you have some cobwebs. You know, even here, employers don't like someone who has stayed home more than three months. They would like someone that came from another job straight here because you are used to waking up in the morning and going to work and going to school. So you want to make sure your forms are very, very complete. That is one of the things I'm sharing with you, having stayed here. And by the way, just because I went to the embassy myself, and now I've heard from you, and I've lived with the Americans, a common theme is emerging. There's just that common theme. And when you send me your comments, and you tell me you're denied, and I've read from, by the way, right now, there's not so many people who have this knowledge, because for me, I learn a lot from your comments. I learn a lot from your questions. Janet here has put in thousands of hours. And for me to put in thousands of, thousands of hours, I've learned something. There are things even me, I can see. I can see why they will deny you. And that's why I'm here. You know what I mean? I can relate and I'm like, okay. I mean, now even me being in the embassy, I can see why this person was denied. So listen to me to increase the chances because no one will promise us. We just want to give our best shot when we go there, okay? So make sure you fill those forms nicely. Because some of you say they didn't ask me a question, but the truth is, before you show up, they've seen where you work, they know you have kids, you're married, you have a, you earn this amount. So honestly, the best chance you have that time is your personality, okay? Now let me move to another point, which is maybe point number three. After you fill in that form, that form, you have to be consistent. You will not believe some of you will be denied because you put something on this form and then they ask you, most, even here in the interview, they don't go asking you things out of what you wrote. Most of the time they just ask you, oh, okay, so you said you worked with who? Okay, for how long were you there? How was the job? Did you like it? Did you? Do? So you feel in, you're working here. And then if you are lying, you will not even remember that you, you, you put there, you are working at Kenyatta Hospital or you are working in a museum. You have already forgot. So make sure you go through those forms, okay? Wherever you tell them on the forms, when you are presenting in the interview, let me tell you, most, more than likely, if they have any questions, they are coming from what you already filled in. Okay, are we clear? So what I'm trying to say is be consistent. Be consistent and be honest, okay? Honest in this thing, I'm not saying that people don't lie, but what I'm saying is if you have to lie, then stick with your lie. You understand? Like say the same thing over and over and over and over again. I can't even insist. I can't even know how long I'll, I'll be on this topic. Sorry, let me check this phone. Okay. Another thing, confidence, confidence, confidence. Okay. Be confident because when you go there, you're looking desperate. They can tell you just want to go and never come back. But if you go there, you know, you, are, you know why you're there and you're appreciating that, you know, your country is already good enough but you have some kind of business to come here and go back, they can read, okay? Also, the next thing I'll mention now, point number four, I finish number five, is your body language. Here, they like eye contact. You see how I'm talking to you and looking in the eye? They believe they can trust this. They trust the eyes. Anytime you start looking away, they feel like, you know what? 
probably you're lying probably you're lying so and another thing in america generally okay at least where i've been don't cross your arms this means close conversation and for us it's innocent for us at home it's normal to cross arms and we don't mean anything most of us used to just sit like this you know or we walk like this here that means no people even take offense I've seen them coming and telling me that man was talking to me with crossed arms. That was so rude. You know, like that is closed. Me and you, we have nothing to talk. Okay. I'm giving you some of those little tips. Although when they come to that country, they are trained, I'm sure, about the culture and the people. So they, they can give you a benefit of doubt. But these are human behaviors. So we have to be honest. So me, I'm here to tell you how they think and what they... Another thing, let me tell you. Another thing, maybe number, number six, smile. Let me tell you the, the important. That's why I used to hear you. If you have an employer dealing with foreigners, they train you to smile. And some of them, I don't know how to smile. I don't. Why are they forcing us to smile? Let me tell you here in this country, customer service. They treat each customer very, very special, one person at a time. If you go to the restaurant, I'm telling you, you won't believe how many people will come to your table asking you, "Oh, honey, how are you doing? Do you need anything? Do you need any water?" Okay, well, thank you for coming. When you're leaving, oh, thank you for coming. When you're coming in, welcome, you know. That's, that's their life. That is their life. So when you go to the embassy, let me tell you, you can have a high chance if you are that smiling. Me, I know I used to be a smiling machine. Generally speaking, that was just part of me. But if you don't know, brighten your face. Okay? When you go there, be resell, you, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, don't shy off. Who cares? Present yourself in a manner that people want to talk to you more. You understand? I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. And this even me, I experienced. I came home after 10 years. If I was to tell you a personal story, I came home after 10 years. And I went to the big city, Nairobi. And then I went to the village. Do you know why I, I love the most? I'll be honest with you. And now I can see what Americans see. I loved the village more. I love the village more. There was just that innocence in the people seeing you and just being happy for you. They're like, oh, oh yeah, 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 it's so natural, you know. And like in the, in the big city where people are just busy. You go to the airport, people are just gloomy. People are serving you at Nakuma, they are just gloomy. Here, no. Even when you reach the supermarket, someone tells you, did you find everything okay? Is there anything I can help you? That is their lifestyle. Okay, another example I can give you when I was at uh, University of Eastern Africa, Baraton, that's why I went to school when I was still back in Kenya. We had so many teachers from America, Europe and everywhere. Okay, it was an international school. So I went with so many people from other countries. One day, one day I was walking and then I met one of my nursing teachers. I think she was from America or Britain. I don't remember. She was walking and then we crossed paths. And then I say, hi, Miss Anderson. She's like, hi, Janet, how are you doing? And then I kept walking. I just smiled and said, hi, Miss Anderson. When I had walked, Miss Anderson, I just had someone calling me. Janet, Janet, I went. So we met again. She said, Janet, let me tell you one thing. You will go very far in life. I've never had someone stop me here. And I've been here three years. No one has ever stopped me and told me how I was doing. And you gave me a very good smile. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I made her day because she had been in Africa for so long. She's lonely. You know what I mean? She's lonely. She doesn't know people. She's looking different. And for her to see this young girl stop her and ask, how are you doing, Miss Anderson? How are you? Me, it came naturally. Let me not cheat you, but that's exact, those were her exact words. She told me, Janet, I've lived here for this long, and when I'm walking on the pavements, no one cares to even tell me how are you doing. But for you, you stood today and smiled. She was happy. She was so happy. So what am I trying to tell you? Relax your faces. Be happy. You will be surprised. Whatever will bring you to America is just your smile. Human psychology. Human psychology. Okay? Treat people well. Treat people well. Okay? And I told you in the previous inter uh, videos, when I went to the embassy, there was this young man who was the one at the window getting ready to serve me. He was a young man and he was serving another older lady, you know. She was in front of me on the day of the interview. And then I kind of moved ahead. So the guy was telling me, move behind. And I wasn't seeing him. So by the time our eyes met, he was kind of frustrated. He was angry at me. Why? I wasn't listening to him. 
So quick, quick, I say, oh, sorry, sir, I didn't see you. I'm sorry, I apologize. And I smiled and I moved back. Do you know, do you see what I mean? Right there, I saw his face bright and just seeing me smiling and apologizing. I'm like, I didn't see you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So I moved back. When my time came, already I had changed his attitude. You know what I mean? The first thing that man told me at the embassy, he told me, you look so familiar. But I know he had read the papers because I used to work at Aga Khan Hospital. He said, I was just in Aga Khan and I had surgery and you look familiar. I said, yes, you look familiar. Now even me, I opened up because I knew if you work at Aga Khan and you have money like from the embassy, most likely you are at the pavilion, you know. That's where all the rich people used to go. I said, yes, I think I've seen you at the pavilion. He said, exactly. That's why I went to have my appendectomy. They removed my appendix and that's why I, where I was. At Aga Khan, I say, yes, no wonder. Yeah, you look familiar also. So we struck a conversation smiling. And then he told me, and he came back to the same thing I'm telling you. The assumption is you want to go to America and not come back. He still did his job. Believe you me, even after smiling, that man still did his job. He asked me, I see you have a job in Aga Khan. So where are you going? How do we know you'll come back? I say, yes, but that's true. You just said I have a job in Aga Khan and you can see my course is only six months. And in fact, I want to get this visa very quick so I don't delay. Okay, I can't have enough time at Aga Khan, enough off. So please, I hope I get this visa quickly, 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 quickly so I can come back on my job. Right there, that's what he typed. Because that was the compelling reason for me to go back. Maybe the other things going for me, I don't know, okay? But remember to relate to people like humans, okay? Be very relax, relax, okay? They are better than you think. It's that tension that makes you go there. Now you are panicking. Another thing, go on time. And I know these ones, we are very good. All of us, when we are going for the interview, we are there by five in the morning. We are in the cold. We are all dressed. That's not a problem, Okay? Prepare your documents the night before, okay? Put your things together, your birth certificates, your bank statements in a nice folder. Know what is where. So if they ask you, you just present. Don't go fumbling. Things are falling here. You look disorganized. Because that time you're panicking. Take a deep breath, okay? If something wrong happens, well, be on time, be organized. Another thing, as I said, I've told you, be your own ambassador, okay? One of my followers here, I don't know if he's watching today, he told me he went there the first time they denied him. The second time he went, it was the same guy, okay? It was the same person who denied him. This time he went to the approach. This is what he said. Oh, hello, sir. You know, I know last time you denied me, but I think you were fair. I was panicking. I wasn't confident. I wasn't ready for the interview. But today I'm very feeling very confident. I hope everything goes well. Are you seeing, my friends? Don't just go and stand there. Are you seeing the difference? You know, yeah, I know last time I was panicking and everything, but this time I'm more prepared, okay? So just say, you know, last time I came, my application was weak, but since then I think my application is stronger. I've gotten a job, I've gotten married, I've taken over my family business, I'm the last born, and another thing, I have this, you know, condition, I can't stay in the cold. Me, I love the weather, you know, I love warm weather. Here where I'm going, there's a lot of snow, that's not something I can deal with. Those are stories you give. How do we know you'll come back? I've given you examples. I know another one, by the way, who used that situation. He told me, Janet, me, I went. And then when they asked me, how, how do we know you'll come back? Say, honestly, for me, the weather, the weather is a big deal. And I don't see myself staying in a cold place. And I want to go and experience the good things that are there. But eventually I want to come back because for me, the weather is just something I can't get over that, you know. I love the weather here, but I love to see what goes on over there, okay? Another point I can tell you, people ask me, okay, let's go through some of the common questions they'll ask you. Now, you, you are going to America for business administration. And I think we have business administration here in Abuja. Or we have business administration here in Kampala, in Nairobi. So why are you going for nursing there when there is nursing here? Okay? My standard answer for most of you who have heard me talking. I always say, you know, sir, ma'am, honestly, there is business administration right here. I will not lie. But the difference is America has given me a chance. America has given me a chance. Here it's so competitive. I have to know someone or, you know, I just, I wasn't lucky. It's here, but only few people can get in. But America has a chance for everyone. Okay. That's how you approach these things. Don't say, oh, they will ask me, this course is here. Where are you going? The course is not enough to accommodate people. 
Like when I was there just training a dentist, they used, they used to admit only 10 dentists those days. The whole of University of Nairobi, they could, not, they could only afford to train like 10 dentists. What if the other kids wanted to, to, to become dentists? Are you seeing my point? Okay, so you just say, I don't think there is room for everyone. Okay, now you are going to America. Why America? I mean, there's Germany. One person told me, they asked me, why not England? At that point, I was like, oh, that was rude. Then I thought about it. I think what that person was asking, why do you want to go to America when you can go to Europe? When you can go to Canada? Okay, you can go to Asia. You can go to the, to the Americas. You know what I mean? South America, Brazil. Why America? So you have to be prepared with those questions. Me, I told this person, I've heard America has the best universities in the world. They are credible. They have good research institutions. You know, when you come back, employers love us. Employers love us when we have the American education. That's why I'm going there and coming back home. You have to create these things, okay? If you are going for maybe uh, culinary arts or something, culinary arts, whatever you pronounce, you know, you want to say, yes, we've learned a lot, but most of the, the, the cuisine we have is from Europe. I want to go to America and learn American cuisine, okay? Or, and I know they have a, combi a combination of French and everything, so I'll be diversified. So when I come back here to start my own business, or when I come here to work in the hotel, I'll bring back the knowledge from America. You know, be natural. You know what I mean? Be natural. We don't know these people, but my friends, what I'm helping you is to think like the Americans and what they see. I want to show you what they see when they see you, okay? But if you have to leave this video today and you didn't hear anything Janet said, the first thing the law is telling them, you are not coming back home. That is what the law tells them. Temporary visa assume that person is not coming. And it's not just you, it's all over the world. But of course, as we know our situation, they always assume we don't have enough money. Of course, if someone was coming probably from Europe, they are more likely to get a visa because they're like, huh, why would I go to America when I have Europe? You understand how things work? So for us, our burden is a little bit higher. Our burden is a little bit higher. We have to prove a lot. Okay? Let me move to visas. Let me move to another way. Another way. I think another reason why they deny you. After reading your comments, I think in my opinion, in my, this is, this is, I'm a blogger. Okay, I'm a blogger, so I'm just telling you. I've had people tell me, Janet, my kids were born in America, you know, so what can I do to get a visa? I've had others telling me, Janet, my husband or my wife is an American citizen and I want to visit and they denied me. Or Janet, what can I do to get a visa to go visit my spouse who, is a, who has a green card or who, has a, who is a citizen? Okay, let me clarify for you one thing. This is very important. Listen to this part. Because some of you assume, and this one I heard directly from them, if they come questioning me, I'll just remove the clip and give them, here, this is what you said, I, I, I do come from the American Embassy, yes, I heard you talk this in the Philippines, I heard you talk like this in, a, in, the, in, a, in Nigeria, I'm giving you credible information, this one came from them, this is, this I've not made up, okay, they said, people just assume because you have an American spouse, you're going to get a visa. No, let me tell you how it works, okay? When you present there and your husband is in America or your wife is in America, first of all, that is a good reason to be denied. You are coming here, you will not go back. End of story. Are they lying? Why do they do that? Because they know if you have an American spouse, they have the right kind of visa. It's called a permanent visa. It's called a green card. It's called an immigrant visa. So the embassy is questioning, why are you applying for a visiting visa when you qualify to apply for a green card? Because the law is telling us, for us to allow you to go to America, you have to have compelling reasons to come back. Now you're telling us you're going to visit your American wife, your American husband. How can we give you a temporary visa? You're not going to come back. You're skipping the line. You are using shortcuts. That's how they think and they're not lying. So you have to exercise a lot of patience. If you have an American citizen, do the right thing. Start early. Just go and file for a green card. Tell your husband to go. I think it's called I-130. File for an American spouse. A green card. It will take eight months, and I know most of you are in love and you're missing each other. But just know the embassy knows it has seen thousands, in fact, millions of such cases. So they are not just going to have mercy on you. 
You can't go there and say, because I'm American, I mean, my American wife, no. The law tells them otherwise. They're going to go, the law tells them temporary visa, they have to have compelling reasons to go home. So if you are showing that your strong ties are already in America, what reason someone coming to audit that file, you tell me, what are they looking at? How come you gave this person a visiting visa? When they did not have compelling reasons, their compelling reasons were to stay in America. Do you see how they think? In that case, in that case, just to do the right thing. And in fact, another visa is K-1, fiancé, okay? You can always, if you have someone who is American planning to marry you, you can always fight for a fiancé visa. That is the correct visa. If you go apply for a student, I mean, no, visiting visa, that is why they will deny you. You see how I'm putting these things together? After doing this work for a while, it's kind of making sense. And I'm saving you a lot of emotions. I'm saving you a lot of heartache. Honestly, this should, information should be coming from the embassy. You know, I think this information should be out there so people know their chances. I can't believe how many people go to the embassy and probably their papers are just thrown on the side. Innocently, innocently, you, you think you have a chance just because you know someone in America who is a citizen. Honestly, you don't even have a chance at that point. Okay, but I'm not the final person. I'm just telling you how they are thinking and what the law is telling them. Now, if you are that person who wants someone here quick, in fact, you have a high chance of applying a student visa. Because, and I've always told you a student visa, you are never attached to anyone. Let's say you have a fiancé or someone who loves you in America. You are better off going just like you don't even know that fiancé. You see what I mean? That's how it works. Yes, my fiancé is American. But when I'm going to apply for a student visa, I have nothing to do with that person. I don't even have to feel it because the form doesn't ask you if you have a boyfriend or girlfriend. Is the form going to ask you, probably ask you about brothers, sisters, and mothers, and children? That's all it's going to ask you. It's not going to ask you, do you have a boyfriend? Unless you volunteer that information. Unless you volunteer that information. So I think even that pathway is much easier. I've seen someone who had a green card and they invite the girlfriend not invite them but apply for them at school because a school has nothing to do with boyfriend or girlfriend you have a higher chance of getting a visa okay okay all right so i don't know i'm not seeing any comments there i've mumbled a lot but i think i've given you a lot a lot of information today a lot of information to lessen your pain you are using a lot of money and another thing before i go let me tell you one thing important also oh i have so many important points i wish i wrote them down but I'll keep on doing these videos because this is one of the most highly sought videos, I think. When I talk about the embassy, people always want this information. I did this when I had maybe 5,000 followers. And I think I did this when I had 15. Okay, now I'm doing this when I have over 40,000 followers. So each time I'll keep on and each time I come back, I'll get better and better and better. So if you're new on this page, start with the latest videos, don't start with the old ones. You will see Janet telling you the things she was telling you going to the embassy and panicking like chicken. You know what I mean? So, you know, watch the first ones, okay? So, what I'm trying to tell you when you go to the embassy, my friends, okay? Remember to relax. This is very important, all right? Remember to have your documents right. Remember to be honest. Remember their human smile, eye contact, body language should be very encouraging, okay? All right. Hi, Janet, spouse visa, our children included, I interview Sam. By the way, though I was reading, I think the law tells them a child that is below 14 years old, I think they don't have to attend the interview. And I think people that are above 80 years old, they don't have to attend the interview. Don't quote me on those, okay? But I always say the, the, the embassy will always guide you, okay? The embassy will always guide you on what they expect from you, okay? And for those... Okay, I almost lost my train of thought. My train of thought before I finished today was try and do things yourself. Try and do things yourself. And I know you have all these agents. And I know you want to come in these groups. The embassy was more likely to trust that person. How did you get this? I went on the internet. I love this school. I've heard about this school. I went and made my application and now I'm here. Okay? Learn to do things yourself. Trust in yourself. Believe in yourself. Okay? This is a perfect example. Let me tell you, and I've told you in previous videos, this is one of those things, one of those countries. If you are one of those people who read the Bible, and you've read somewhere where it says, ask and it shall be given, 
Knock and the door shall be opened. This is one of those countries. You do not have to know anyone. All you need is the internet. Go do, check whatever you want. Go for that school. Go for that conference. Go for whatever you are looking for. Apply. You will get in. You will get in, my friends. Huh? And so one follower yesterday, today I have a lot of embassy questions. I like all my followers. So he asked me, Janet, okay, I kind of know the ambassador in Washington. Do you think the ambassador can help me? And my answer was like, no, no. Okay? The only time the ambassador of your country, whether it's in Nigeria, Kenya, wherever country you come from, and you happen to be friends with the ambassador, the only time they can help is either you are working, you are part of the crew that was recruited to come and work in America on official duty, or you are the family member, so you are coming as the family members of the workers and the ambassador. And those will also go through the United States Embassy. You understand? The rest, this is a straightforward nation. This is a straightforward nation. Okay? The laws work. Or the laws work. You will not benefit whether you know the ambassador or not. Okay? So I thought I have to point that out. And some of these questions we are very innocent, we don't know. But I'm here to tell you. Okay? Someone coming from a village, someone coming from the big city, when you go to the embassy, to them, you are just the same. They don't even tell the difference. You understand? They don't, they can't even tell the difference. The only thing that will make you different is, oh, this one is confident. This one is smiling. This one seems to know a lot about the school she's going to. Okay? This one seems to know about the program that she's going to. Alright? This one filled in the forms correctly. They don't know who grew up in the village? Who grew up with an Nairobian accent? Who grew up with a, you know, Abuja accent? They don't know. <laughs> they just want to see someone who is speaking clearly. Your conversation is clear. It's loud enough. And that was one, another point I, for, I almost forgot. Be clear. Be articulate. You don't annoy them. Let's not make them angry. Let's not, you know when you are trying to talk to people and you can't hear. Can you imagine if I came to class today to teach you something and I'm just mumbling. <laughs> Yes. I mean, it's annoying. So you want to be clear, articulate, and confident. Okay? So remember to fill the forms yourselves. And the other video I did for you guys, do not allow fake agents. And I've received so many thank yous on this topic. People have told me, Janet, I was conned a lot of money. Thank you so much. If you didn't watch that video, it was very long, but at the beginning, I told you how to know. Basically, in a nutshell, for you to get an American visa, the end result is usually at the embassy. That is the only way you can tell the difference between a fake agent and a real agent. And I know some of you are applying to go to Canada. And of course, there are those agents helping you to navigate. Someone told me they have all these forms coming from Canada and someone is helping them to fill and then they have to come up with a lot of money. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. A lot of money, a lot of money. And then the agent, what the agent will do, will just put you in the express entry. How many of you have seen me post a, a video here about Canada? Express entry, straight from the Canadian, uh, uh, em uh, Canadian embassy, go Canadian um, government instructing you a very clear concise video have your documents ready take your english exam apply here and then we'll put you in the pool the pool does not guarantee you permanent residency but it can invite you for an interview when you invite you for the interview you stand a high chance we'll ask you be honest give us clear information do not contradict so what the agent is doing for you He's just, this agent is doing exactly the same thing you will be doing. The agent does not have any priorities. First of all, understand that. Agents do not have any priorities. Can I, can I, let, let me, let me repeat. Let me repeat this information. And why I encourage you to watch bloggers like us do a lot of research and do things on your own. Let me repeat myself. Agents have no priority in the United States. The only people that can guarantee you a visa are embassy officials employed by the embassy after you show up for the interview. End of story. What the agent is doing for you is work you can do for yourself. Except, except for those who are watching me. Let's say you are in information and technology and you have a big company employing you straight from home. Let's say you are a nurse. 
and the agent is coming back home to recruit you, those ones work with them. They already know employers. They already know immigration attorneys. They already know the steps you need to take. Instead of you doing yourself, and if a nurse is listening to me and you're one of those nurses who is wanting to do things on your own, remember this. And I'll go and read about H14 uh, visa and I'll come and clarify that. But for now, based on the information I have, if you are going to do yourself and go to CGFNS and apply all these things, how sure are you, after you finish the NCLEX, that you will get a visa in the embassy? Because at the end of the day, you will have to go there and ask either for a visiting visa when you come here and start running around or go and ask for a student visa when you come here and start running around. Unlike someone who is patient enough, who is willing to pay the nursing agent money, and the agent will help you pass the exam, tell you the correct steps, train you how Americans think, give you an immigration attorney, and present the green card in the embassy for you. You, your children, your spouse. That is a good deal. That is a good deal. Those are the only agents who are representing a big company that you know in America. And they are telling you clearly, step one is for you to apply. Then this is this. This is this. I've seen. I've been there. They will, they, the lawyer is in constant, constant communication telling you the next step will take you six weeks. The next step will take you three months. Now your visa is here. First of all, pass this exam. After you pass, we will apply to USCGF, uh, CUSCIS.gov. Once it comes there, we'll take it to the National Visa Center. From the National Visa Center, it will come to the embassy. That is how it works. There is no other way. That one, I can swear. I can swear. This is the process how people get work permits from America. The first step is USCIS.gov, the immigration. After they approve you, it is sent to the State Department, which deals with the National Visa Center that distributes visas around the world. And then you will just get an email straight from the embassy telling you you have an appointment on this day. Okay? Any other agent, I don't care how big, I don't care how fancy they look, no rights, zero rights. You, have, you, you just have the same rights like the embassy, I mean like the, the agent. Okay? Remember you can do these things on your own. Remember you can put in your time. If you use agents, go there, do your research, make sure they are genuine. Okay? Most of them are genuine, but they are doing things that you can do on your own. You understand? So just because you are applying for an, with, through an agent does not mean you have a better chance. But for the nurses, I highly, highly recommend that you use an agent. Okay? One of my followers is right there saying, I didn't reply to the message. I will reply to you one day. Okay? I'm almost graduating. May 10 is my end of school. Once I graduate, I'll have more time for you guys. I'm still replying, trying my best. Okay? If you don't know, my friends, just go on this page and see how many followers Janet has. When I'm replying your message, I'm still behind by 10,000. Listen to me that number again. How many questions I have to answer one person? 10,000 questions. That's why I do this video. Like this video, do you know how many people I've answered today in this video? I'm pretty sure I've answered over 10,000 people. Believe you me, because I read, I get, and I know what, where the problem is, okay? All right, for those who followed me and for those who are new, Janet Rangi on YouTube, you'll find me there, you'll find these videos there. It's Janet Rangi on uh, Facebook, formerly Immigrant Business Directory, same thing, you'll find me here, okay? All right, just do the right things, have confidence, have confidence, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we always say the big elephant in the room is the embassy. This is a topic that I'll keep on presenting so i can inform my people all the time so when we go there we have the best chance we are presenting our best self okay so and another thing before i forget oh my god i have so much in this embassy people told me janet i was denied how long do i wait before i go back this is what they say we don't have a time limit they don't have the law doesn't tell them you can be denied and go back and apply after one week that is not their problem okay but this is what they say. I think they say an average of 90 days, okay? But from what I heard them say is, okay, you have to have material changes. Like, since we saw you three weeks ago and today, what is the difference? What has changed? 
What has changed? So if something has changed, then you have a good chance. You can go back and say, I applied three months ago, but that time I was going to school. I didn't go to school, but now I have a school. Like, explain. What has changed? In fact, if I were you going for the second or third time, uh, that will be my opening statement. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. You know, last time I came here, this is what was going on. But this time I feel more prepared. I think my application is more stronger. And I'm hoping for the best because this has changed since the last time I saw you. That is the only thing they say. KJ, you are late, but you know, thank you for coming. The only thing, the only thing they say is what has changed. But as far as saying how many times you can go, how long you wait, they don't care. Of course, if you go after one week, your chances are very low, okay? Remember everything you say, they type. So you can't go there and change your story. I always say from the time you go to the embassy, the first time you present, present to that straight story that is true to your head so that it sticks with you over the period. So long as you are dealing with those people, when your story changes just a little bit, okay? That is how they'll find out, okay? All right. Rose, thank you so much for sharing for the nurses, Avant, healthcare professionals, Adavia, healthcare, those are the people, the agents that are people are successful with. Those are the people I've come across. Adavia and Avant, go down here, you'll see Rose Tor has shared with you if you are a nurse and you wanted to know which agents can help you. And next time or tomorrow, I will post for you the top 100 companies that employ foreign workers. How about that? How about that's our bonus for today, okay? I'm going to post for you. Let me repeat. Those of you who keep on telling me, Janet, I want to come and work in America. Okay, not just the nurses. There are some companies that actually will bring you from home and bring you to America. Okay, I'm going to post the top 100 companies that employ foreign workers on H-1B visa. Okay, that one I promise. When Janet promises, is going to come be prepared and read through. I wish you well with your next embassy, okay? So I want to see you in America very soon, okay? Remember to keep the dream alive and have a strong desire to succeed. The desire will push you over the edge. The desire will make you the best. You stand, you fall, you stand, you fall, but you never give up, my friends, because you are the best. Do your best. Present your best self. I'm praying for you. We say we're going to pray. At the end of the day, we can apply to the embassy, okay? All right. Thank you so much, my guys, for coming. Thank you for following. I'll see you in the next video. Until next time. All right. This topic has come handy. I'm facing the embassy soon. I've done the DS-160. Congratulations, okay? Congratulations, I'm happy for you, okay? All right, Eunice, Damaris, Naomi, okay? All of you, my people, all right? Well, who is that? Let me see. Gibson or who? Meroka, Mary, okay? All right, my friends, I love you so much. See you, Simon. See you soon in America, Moses, okay? Awesome, bye-bye.